Hey everybody, watch this review here with a look at the Marvel Legends X-23 from the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure line. Um, I wasn't going to be uploading reviews this early into the week, but because I want to do all of October as just a Villains and Monsters month, I figured I actually have to upload some stuff early just to keep within the theme. So this, all the reviews that I'll be doing early on <coughs> will be uploaded think maybe September 30th overnight but um uh, for people not familiar with the character she's kind of Wolverine's daughter kind of not I mean she's was cloned from his genetic material and grown in a lab I think by Hydra but I'd have to look at the back of the package just think sure but shadowy organization recreated the Weapon X programming using damaged DNA taken from the mutant nose Wolverine Result was X-23, yeah, it doesn't reveal. I think it was either Hydra or AIM, but I could be wrong. Stat-wise, fighting skills are pretty decent. Now, I first learned about the character in X-Men Evolution. I thought she was actually a pretty cool character. Just because um, a lot of stuff Wolverine does do is like somewhat agile, so... Most agile movements I usually attribute more to female characters, the male characters, who I think of more as being powerhouses in terms of just gender stereotypes, which I understand is wrong, but that's just the way I think. I'm an old backwards fossil, but um another big reason for getting this is just the centerpiece for for Apocalypse, because I don't know if I'll ever end up buying the build a figure because I'm not terribly impressed with the overall look, but the face sculpt is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna probably take a look. By the way, there are actually two versions of this figure. There's the black version, which I own, that has a more European face, whereas there's a more purplish version with a Mexican face. Well, at least that's what the people refer to them as. I mean, the other version's got, like, a much wider face and really larger lips, but I obviously prefer this version, so I bought it. I'm um, the only other one with a variant. I'm not sure which one's the variant, by the way. The only other figure with a variant from this wave was the Sasquatch from Alpha Flight, which had a white version, which I was actually tempted to buy, and I still might. I mean, overall, the wave doesn't thrill me. The only other figure... Oh, wait. Bishop also has a variant. He's also bald. In fact, he's the only one with a listed... Iron Fist has a variant, too. I didn't realize that or appreciate that fact. And Wolverine has an unmasked variant. Wow, I do I look like an ass? I named the two that didn't have a variant listed on the pack as having a variant. And then... I forgot to mention the fact that there are all these other ones that actually have listed variants. But Maestro, technically speaking, also has... A variant because they forgot to package the apocalypse piece with him for some of the packs I mean it's not a real variant variant it's just them screwing up like I don't know I mean, it's not an exciting way the only other figure I'd probably get is the bishop just because I think bishop's a pretty cool figure and the variant Sasquatch because I haven't been that impressed with the Wendigo figure so far uh, it comes with a comic which will probably be the second comic I've ever read with her in it. I also read the trade paperback Childhood Ends, with Childhood's End, which featured her and Blasco, and of course Ileana Rasputin. I think that was also known as Magic, but I'm getting off topic. But yeah, um, obviously a pretty decent looking figure. Very slight build, but it's really true to the character because she was, does look kind of scrawny in the comics. Or at least the comics I've seen. The Apocalypse piece, which I'll quickly run through first. It's really nice looking. I really love the face here. I like the upper torso and so forth. There were um, a number of variants from like that had more of a blackish look to um, these portions than a bluish look. At least that's how I understand it. I mean, I think there was something with like a pure black, but I mean, I think it was more of a production thing than an actual variant thing. But I don't know. 
I just really, really love this piece right here, and I'll probably hang on to it, even if I did get the other piece and just use it as a kind of a bootleg bust, but <clears throat> onto the figure. The kick-ass thing is she does have the retractable foot claw, as you can see here. Oh, originally I was planning on doing a cheesy special effect. Like, during the intro, I was just going to, like, slash the package. Then it'd be kind of like she'd escape from the package, but then, logistically speaking, I was worried about actually damaging the figure, so that was a no-go, so. And although she does have a bicep joint, which I'm usually not that fond of in female characters, I prefer that they just have sort of socket at the ri at the elbow. I mean, it's kind of like a split here, so it does go in here, so it doesn't look as phony as other ones, and you can see there is a little muscular toning here, too, which actually is pretty cool. No muscular toning on the outside, I don't like that, but you can clearly see there's a little indent on the inside here. I don't know if I can really represent that well, but it's there, believe me. I mean, a lot of figures, they don't, they just don't represent the muscular toning for some reason. Um, in terms of articulation, the wrist will move. It's expected. No, um, articulation of the fingers. The, um, forearm will twivel or twist or do whatever, full 360. Double pin joints at the elbows. Bicep obviously moves, swivels 360. Arm does, um... Arm slash shoulder does all the typical stuff. It's kind of getting her out of the shot there, sorry. But it looks kind of cheap how thin the uh, piece of plastic is. Um, she has... No, she doesn't actually have an app joint, just look like an app joint. Might just be how it's painted, but it feels solid. Head will move, but not a terrible amount. I mean, they used a softer foam for the hair, which is a nice touch because it doesn't impede as much, but I think it's just the way the head's sculpted. But I do like how this will move here, this can be out here. But, um, waist obviously moves. The, uh, leg will move, but it's like the later, um, joint on the other ones where it's, they kind of make it smaller. And it doesn't have as good of a range of motion. So it can't like go across like this. And like so they can in some figures. But I think. Yeah, there it goes. The hip will move. For some reason like one side of the figure is always stiffer than the other. I'm not sure why this is. But, but I mean this will kind of make it look nat more natural when posing. But. If you actually like play with it or anything. I actually do play with my figures. I know collectors aren't supposed to ever admit that they play with their figures, but when I'm sitting at my computer or something, I'll just like absentmindedly pick up a figure and just play around with the joints and so forth, which is another reason why I've always liked the articulation. At work, I can't get away with really having figures out and play with them, but I have um, a little Rubik's Cube that I sort of twist around a little ball I like to toss while I'm just thinking, but, you know, I'm really, really huge into kinetic motion and so forth. Just stay an absent-minded characteristic. A double-jointed knee. Um, yeah, there is. Calf does move. It's really well hidden, though, because the sculpt here. I really appreciate that. Looks awesome. Um, ankle slash foot has point of articulation. No toe articulation because of the blade in the foot. But yeah, I like the character, I like the figure. I mean, for a Toy Biz female sculpt, it's actually came out surprisingly nice. Paint, um, it's pretty even. It's a really glossy coat for the clothing. I don't like how the body's tanned. The tan doesn't seem to be... I mean, the face is a lighter tan than the actual body. I don't know if they did that just so they could try to, though even then I don't think they could do that for the other figure just because they'd have to have these other pieces on it, but plus um, that joint really sticks out because the paint color is different. Weird. Um, 
the glossy blacks in different shades. It'll fade out to like a white in some places. As far as I can see, I don't. There aren't really many paint defects on this figure. I mean, I usually get one that has like a stupid number of paint defects, but uh, this one actually looks pretty clean. However, um, I see little specks of paint are coming off just because they <coughs> stuff. But this joint's obviously too stiff. All in all, I like the figure. I think it's a pretty cool one. She's actually a pretty cool character. And of course, um, being a female character with claws, for some reason they decided to make her a cutter. I guess it also is supposed to represent her met, her detachment and so forth, and it's kind of a natural choice given that she's resistant to pain and emotionally detached and has a thing for blades, but I usually hate when they try to bring something that's like so contemporary into the comic, but just because it does feel like a little bit of pandering. But um, yeah, I'm just rambling now.